What up, y'all? Welcome to your favorite podcast, Cheekies and Chill. I am so happy to speak to you guys to give you some info on business because April is Financial Literacy Month. So I wanted to take this opportunity to dive deep into something I get asked about a lot. People ask me all the time, Cheekies, I want to start my own business. How do I go about it? What did you do? So that is what this episode is going to be about. So I hope that you guys enjoy it and you learn a thing or two. Okay. So my very first business was called Blow Me Dry and it was a dry bar. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with the dry bar and I did get the idea from from them because I loved going to the dry bar myself. And I love the fact that it was like, oh, you go into the salon, you get your hair washed, you get it blow dried, and then you don't have to wash it for a few days. So I was like, you know what? I want my own business. And I had saved up some money from like reality shows that we were doing. And I had always helped my mom with her businesses, like helping her start the jeans and the perfume and the makeup line and her skincare. And I was the one moving everything forward. I was kind of like, okay, now it's my time to invest in something. And I will be honest, it wasn't as successful as I would have liked. And I say this, I've shared this quite a bit on the podcast. And I'm okay with saying that now. During that time, it was very difficult because it's my very first you know, business and I wanted it to be successful. And I was like, I tried my very, very best. But then I learned the beauty behind failure. And I think that that is something that I want you guys to learn, if anything, from this podcast is that it's okay to fail because failing also makes you grow. It makes you wiser. It makes you understand that it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fall on your face. It's all about how you get back up, okay? And giving yourself that grace of saying, okay, I fell on my face. It didn't work out but at least you tried it. At least you took the risk. At least you took that leap of faith to say, I'm going to try this and I'm not going to let fear paralyze me from growing. Hopefully it is successful. Hopefully you have your blow, you you know, blow me dry. That name my mom helped me come up with, by the way, blow me dry. (laughs) You know, you know, it's kind of like doble sentido. Like it had like a little double meaning there. But anyways, and maybe yours will work out and I hope it does. But for me, I'm that type of person that not anymore. I was that learned things the hard way. And I needed to go through that very tough lesson in order to appreciate everything that was to come later, you know? So anyways, I opened the business because I love everything beauty. That's just been me since I can remember since I was 14. I was like, Oh my God, I was the girl that would just watch the girls on TV and and like how they did their makeup. And, And I wanted to know why their skin was so flawless. And I just loved anything and everything, you know, beauty, the beauty industry. And so Blow Me Dry was a way of like me just tapping into that industry and also not only just going into a place where you can get beautiful and feel beautiful, but I wanted you to leave with some knowledge. So there was always, I've always been into quotes and phrases and I had them all over the walls in the restroom everywhere. So anywhere that you sat down to get your hair done or your makeup done, because we also did makeup, there was a quote because that's always been so important to me. I always knew that I had a mission and anything that I was going to do whether it be skincare, makeup, my blow dry bar, anything, there was always going to be a positive message. So that I always had very, very clear. What I didn't have clear was that it was very important. There's a saying in Spanish que dicen, el que tiene tienda que la tienda, sino que la venda, which means if you have a store, you have to be there. If not, you need to sell it. The circumstances were so crazy for me. I opened up this blow dry bar, this beauty salon. And mind you, we didn't do color. It was like, no mess, no fuss, just plush. That was like our whole slogan. No mess, no fuss, no plush. It was just get in there, get your hair washed. You can, you know, get like a mask, a hair mask. You can get your makeup done, but there wasn't any like hair color and dyes and all that stuff. So anyways, oh, it's taking me back. This whole thing is taking me back. It was like so cute. It was a beautiful time in my life, but also a very hard time. So anyways, I opened it up in 2012. And that's when I had just moved out of my mom's house. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I was doing it more now, if I'm really honest with myself, I was doing it more to make my mom proud, to show her I can do this. I don't necessarily need your name. And I know that's going to sound really bad. I've explained it many times on the podcast, but I wanted Blow Me Dry to stand on its own and not necessarily put it in a Latin community because 
people were going to go because it was, they knew I was my mom's daughter and, and I really wanted it to just stand on its own. So for me, I didn't have my ducks, I guess, in a row. I was doing it for not the right reasons. Yes, I wanted my own business. That was the right reason. Yes, I love the beauty industry. That was a, a great you know, reason. But the foundation wasn't really because I truly, truly like wanted to do this for the rest of my life. It was more of like, okay, I have this option. I love this. But it was more, I think, to prove a point to my mom. And I think that's probably why it didn't work out. Because when I opened it, it took a while to open it. I spent a lot of unnecessary money. Now I can look back and say, hey, I could have saved a lot more money on the fixtures. You know, I didn't necessarily need that expensive flooring or those expensive chairs. You know, I wanted it to look very, very nice because in the area that I was in, but I could have done it in a much inexpensive way, I guess. I could have bargain shopped. There's so many different things. And if you go to a lot of these shops, unless you've already, you're a franchise and you have the money and the money's coming in, and you can go ahead and fluff it up. I fluffed it up going straight in. I put in a lot of money before even opening it. And I, that's where it went wrong, you know? And I did everything the legal way. And I remember my mom telling me, you're like, why are you doing that? Why do you need permits? And I'm like, well, mom, that's the legal, that's the right way to do things. But she was the first to tell me like, no, you don't, you're fine. You don't need to get all these permits. It takes too long. It's very expensive. Mind you, that's something I'll leave in your hands. Again, I had to learn all of this. I had to go through it and I don't regret it because it helped me learn and grow and what to do and not to do, right? So anyways, for me, it was that. It was, I did the permits, I did the construction. I spent way too much money on building versus saving some of that money that I had saved up for this business for a rainy day because there were a lot of rainy days, okay? Four years of rainy ass days, a rainy th thunderstorm, you guys, cloudy. It was just, it was a lot. Anyways, so that's the first thing, the first mistake I, I feel that I made, spending too much money on making it look pretty. And also, I wasn't a hairstylist myself. Maybe I should have gone to cosmetology school and learn how to like, because I couldn't work on people because I didn't have my license. So I couldn't sit at a chair myself or stand at a chair and do the services myself. So I, in reality, like I had to be there to run the place and pay myself versus me standing behind a chair doing services. And then that way I have my own income coming through, you know, not necessarily just relying on the other estheticians or because we also did facials at a facial room. Anyways, so that was another thing, you know, that I was like, damn, I wish I, I at least could have been one to, to do the services myself because that was going to make me more money. But anyway, so when I opened it, let's go back and kind of like jumping back and forth, but hopefully it's all making sense. So when I opened it, it was 2012. I had just moved out. I put my heart and soul into this place. It took a while to open it. Construction, permits, all that stuff. It took a lot longer. Finally, we opened it. I got that hug and those words, Miha, I'm so proud of you from my mom. She was just like in awe. I did not let her see the place. And she lived down the street from where you know, it was Encino in Encino, California. And there's a lot of like, it's a Caucasian community, Caucasian, Armenian community. And anyway, so she was down the street. She lived down the street, but I never let her stop by. I was like, no, 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 no. I don't want you to see it until the grand opening. So I got that gratification for me. It was like, oh my gosh, she's happy. She's proud of me. Like everything she taught me, everything I learned in, you know, Jen Rivera University or the hard knock of life university it all like she can see it, you know, and I got that satisfaction and that stamp of approval from my mom. And that made me feel really good. But then my mom and I have a fallout. I'm in like this deep depression. I couldn't go. I had to hire someone. I was supposed to be the manager, the general manager, but I couldn't. I was just physically, emotionally distraught. I was just in a really bad place. So I needed to hire someone. She was very expensive. And... Uh, just think about it. I'm like, damn, it could have been very successful, but shit, shit happened. So anyways, I, I, you know, I hired this girl. She was amazing. Her name was Olivia. Shout out to her. If she ever hears my podcast or whatever, she was awesome. She ran the place, but she, since she was, she had a lot of experience, she cost me a lot, but she was worth every penny anyway. So a lot of what I was supposed to make to kind of, you know, keep the overhead going, everything, keep the place running. It was to her because I couldn't. Then my mom passes away a few months later. 
And then I really couldn't be there. So mind you, I opened this. I started this place in 2011, finally opened it in 2012. So many things happened in 2012. My mom passes away too in 2012. Then my siblings, the little ones, Johnny and Jenica, Johnny was 11, Jenica was 15. They needed me. I couldn't be there. So Olivia finally quit on me. (laughs) She's just like, you know, this isn't working out. A lot of people aren't coming in. All this stuff happened, you guys, and I still kept it open for four years. I, my numbers were red the entire time. Any money that I got, because it was my ego, it was my pride and joy, it was my first business, I kept it open for all the wrong reasons. And the reason I speak about this is because I want you guys to learn from my mistakes. We have to learn when to say I have to let this go as much as it hurts me. I have to let this go. We have to know when to walk away. And I didn't like, it was my ego. That's all I could say. And I wanted to be there for my siblings and they needed me. I had to take them to school. Like I would stop by, but I couldn't be there. I couldn't tend to my business the way I should have. When Olivia left, then I hired friends. So I hired one of my friends, one of my my best friends. Her name is Julie and she did an amazing job. And she ran it for a while. And then she was just like, okay, I got to go too. And then another friend of mine, Ellen, stepped in and she helped me. And we were just always in red, you guys. And it was just, it was crazy. So finally, after four years, I was like, I have to stop this. This has to stop. I need to just stop the bleeding. As much as I cried the day that we closed, because again, imagine my savings was all in the flooring, And in the beautiful furniture and in the painted walls and in all these fixtures and upgrades that I made to this place, I was like, oh my gosh, I have nothing to my name once again. And it hurt me. But then after, as soon as I closed the doors, I could breathe. And I was like, oh my goodness, (gasps) I have my life back because the stress was insane. How I did it, the grace of God, I have no idea. Because then that's when I was like, okay, I don't have my business. I have to let this go. I was just starting my music career. And of course, music and the way I started, you know, I, I always say this, I started ass backwards <laughs> because I just jumped into that too. I mean, I'm glad I didn't give up and we're here and, and things are working out amazing, but it was a very slow start. So I had to figure out how am I going to make ends meet? How am I going to work? A lot of things happen. I save more money. And I just knew, I was like, okay, now I really have to get my shit together. In order to find my way, I need to find out who I am, what I really want, what really makes me happy, what is my passion. Because I think that once you have that in line, that makes everything else just run a lot smoother. And you do things with love. And again, with Blow Me Dry, I knew I loved the beauty industry, but I wasn't someone in the beauty industry. And I wasn't a actual cosmetologist or esthetician myself. I went to esthetician school, but couldn't finish it. It's a whole other story years before. But this is what brings me to the businesses that I have now. And the very first business that I invested in a little bit after Blow Me Dry was my skincare. And I had saved up a little bit of money, wasn't a lot. And, um, I knew I love skincare. I've been using skincare since I was 16. This is something that I went to esthetician school for three, for three months, didn't finish the six months, but I did three and I learned a lot, but I already knew that I loved skincare and this is something I can stand behind. And, you know, in 2012 social media, we only had Twitter then, you know what I mean? And I think like Facebook maybe, or my, I don't remember, but a social media wasn't what it is now. When I started my skincare, it was in like 2015, 2016, like now it's okay, Instagram. And like, it was just a little bit more out there. And I got myself a business partner because I knew financially, I was like, I don't think I can do this myself. And I needed someone that had been in the industry for a long time. And and that's how I had my business partner, Judy Castro. I started off with her because she started doing like my facials and she has an aesthetic spa. And I started going to her aesthetic spa in Corona. She's still in Corona, actually. So when we lived out in Norco, that's how I met her. We became cool. And then we got to talking. I was like, I want my own skincare line. And it was Diamond Skincare. Now it's Be Flawless. But that's how how it started. And I just knew, okay, what is my passion? It is important, you guys. If you want to start your own business, it has to be a passion. It has to be something 
that you're totally into, in my opinion, at least. There are people that are like, okay, whatever, this is just going to make me money. I'm going to do what I got to do. For me, what has worked out for me, Janae, for Cheekies, is loving, absolutely loving what I'm doing because since I'm the one selling it on social media or when I talk to people, you can just see how my face lights up with my products, the things that I stand behind, the things that have my name, my image, because it's important to have that connection. It's important that if you're speaking about it, what comes from the heart reaches a heart. People feel that. People aren't dumb. People like see it. People feel it. And that's why, in my opinion, it's important that you are passionate because that's how you're going to be able to wake up every day and be excited about what you're doing. Yes, money is important. Absolutely. You need money to make money. Yes. Nowadays, it all depends. If you're buying things overseas, yes, they're gonna, you're going to have to buy a lot of it, which requires a lot of money. But if you're keeping it in the States, you can just buy a little bit, small quantities, small minimums, and start there and not think, okay, I'm going to become a millionaire. Like it's not, it's about just making, for me, it's like making your money back plus a little bit more instead of looking at it as, oh my God, this is going to like make me, I can retire. Like, no, it takes a while to get there and, and be patient because in any business that you open or any business that you start, it takes at least two years, one, if you're lucky for things to start flowing, to get your money back, to see your investment. It takes a while. So you have to be patient. So I would suggest keep your job if you have a nine to five or you have whatever type of job you have while you start your business and save. And this is what I we talk about. It doesn't have to be a lot of... You could just say, hey, I'm going to give myself two years to save because on the third year, I want to start my business. I'm going to start from every paycheck. I'm going to save 50, $100, whatever it is that you can every month or from every paycheck, every 15 days, put that money to the side and pretend that it does not exist because that is for your business or for a rainy day if something happens and you need that money. Either way, we should be saving money because it is important because we never know what's going to happen. You know, So if you want to start your own business, that is one thing that I would suggest. Start saving and give yourself a plan. It could be anything. Now with social media, with the power of social media, you guys, you don't even have to be a super famous person or come from a super famous family. You can honestly do it with the power of marketing and knowing that if you don't have a famous background or you're not in the limelight per se, know that you're going to need to save some money to boost your posts, to know that, okay, if I'm going to post on Facebook or I'm going to post on TikTok, there's a way of boosting your posts or your business so that you reach the demographic that you're looking for, whether it be the beauty industry or the food industry or whatever it may be. There are categories and ways of promoting your business to certain regions in the country, to a certain demographic, to a certain age group, like it, there's a whole way of doing that so that you make sure that, okay, you can, it could be a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, $500. It all depends on the reach that you want. You can start off slow and then little by little, you know, widen your horizons, but you have to know it, it's going to take some time. It's going to take a little bit of investment. Maybe for a little bit, you're not going to be able to pay yourself because it's all going towards marketing in order to make your business grow. Like you need to know all of these things going in. And this is the hard truth, unless you just go in and you're just like a big bang and it's like super successful. But also with that, I prefer, and that's how it's gone in my career and my, you know, as a, as a singer, it's been a slow uphill battle and I prefer it that way. I personally prefer to go little by little steady versus it going like a big boom because It's not how you get there, how long it takes you to get there. It's how long you could sustain yourself when you get there. So for me, I'm like, okay, let me take my time. Let me savor this. Let me enjoy this little by little. It helps me appreciate things more when it's just steady uphill versus it just going super quick. I hope and I pray that if whatever business you guys want to start, it's a super fuck, it's a banger, it's a bang and you make a lot of money, but also know to save. Like it's important to save money, you guys, especially in the economy that we're in. Just to finish this first part, be patient, understand that it might take some time, save money, invest in marketing, invest in your business for it to grow, for it to continue growing because marketing is the biggest thing and it's the most expensive part of owning your own business, but it's okay because that's what's going to make it obviously grow. And if what you're selling, you're absolutely passionate about and you're selling something great, something that you believe in, then your clientele is going to feel that 
and they're going to keep coming. You're going to have recurring clients, customers, you know what I mean? And that's what you want. The people that buy once, you want them to continue buying. So you want to make sure that you're selling something good quality. For me, it's important that not just because it has my name and I think it's going to sell, that's all it needs. Like for me, it's like, no, I want to give people quality products at a very good price because I'm always thinking of people's financial situations and and I put myself in people's shoes. And for me, that's my personal thing. Like I'm not trying to take advantage in any way. I, I want to make sure people fall in love with the things that I'm selling because I'm super passionate about it. And it's not just about making a quick buck for me. It, it's just, it's not. I, I believe in like having integrity in that way. And that's a, that's a huge thing for me. Something that is important to me because I want to be able to sleep at night. So I hope that you guys have those same values and, and see it that way before starting a business. That's just my own personal advice. So now let's get into like the nitty gritty of it for Blow Me Dry. I started a corporation. I started a corporation and under that corporation, I did a DBA, okay, which is a business under. So it's like, you know, your corporation or it could be an LLC, which a lot of people recommend LLCs because they stand on their own. And once you pass away, like no one's liable. It just, you know what I mean? Like a corporation does the same thing. I went through LegalZoom, you guys. I learned everything through LegalZoom. I didn't have the money at that time or the extra money to get an attorney and for an attorney to explain everything to me. I just Googled everything. I Googled it. I did my own research. I went to LegalZoom. I started it all myself. And it was fairly a quick process and pretty straight to the point. But I do recommend you opening up an LLC or a corporation and S Corp is what I've always used because it also helps with taxes. It also protects your personal assets. So the business kind of stands on its own. I do recommend your business having its own EIN number because again, that protects you, your personal assets. And from there, you can eventually start paying yourself. The business can start paying you and everything's kind of separate and your business you know, files taxes and you file your personal taxes and everything is kind of separated. It's still yours. The business is still yours, but it becomes its own identity. It's like its own social security number is an IEA number for your business. It's kind of like the way to, to look at it. you know. And I choose to have business partners because I want to focus on my music and it works out for me and I can focus and I can still tap in and make sure that everything is like ran through me, but I don't have to, again, because I learned through Blow Me Dry that I'm like, if I'm not there hundred percent, it's going to be very, very hard for it to be successful. So I need someone that does a lot of the leg work while I'm doing my thing. So if I'm growing as cheeky as the artist, then my businesses grow and they benefit because I'm doing my thing, but I also have a person that I can trust. That works for me. Now, if you have the time, or you have a spouse or a best friend, or you want to do it yourself, as long as your paperwork and everything, that's one thing. I'm so anal, you guys, about filing taxes. I don't want to deal with Uncle Sam and I don't want to have issues and I don't want to be audited. So I I am a paper person. (laughs) I save all the receipts. I save all invoices. I save it for just in case. I have files, you guys, since, I don't know, 2009 that are in my storage. I save everything because... I was just taught that way. And it's very old school, I guess. And there are other ways now to do it better. And now my assistant, my new assistant's helping me with condensing everything and putting things on like, you know, the computer and scanning stuff. I'm still like very old school because I'm very like, I like tangible things. I want to feel the paper. I want to know. That's just who I am. But anyways, going back to the whole thing. um, So it all depends. I do. It's important. File your taxes. You don't want to get screwed, you guys, because they will come. If you don't pay your taxes, they will come into your account and not ask for your permission and Uncle Sam will take what belongs to him, even if it's yours. They won't even ask you. You'll go look at your account and you're like, where did my money go? Well, you didn't pay your taxes. So they'll come into your bank account and they can do that. And there's nothing that you can do about it. So it is important that you have all of that situated and you can do it quarterly or you can do it at the end of the year, whatever works out for you. With some of my business partners, we do it quarterly. Like with Vanessa Sanchez, who I have plantita as a hair care line with. We do it quarterly. We sit down every quarter, we go through our numbers and that's how we do it. You know, a bookkeeper is super important. If in the beginning you can't afford someone to do your bookkeeping, you do it yourself, but it is important that you save every document that if you, you know, now you don't really need a location the way I had with Blow Me Dry, a physical place to go. Now everything is online. Now everything is e-commerce. You know what I mean? So you don't really need a lot of paperwork, but whatever paperwork you have, save it scan it, 
whatever works best for you, but have that so you can go back and dot your I's and cross your T's and make sure that all that is taken care of because you don't want to screw anyone and you don't want to get screwed, especially with no lube and without your permission, you guys. So with that being said, do your taxes. And I recommend that you do get your EIN number. If you can do it yourself, great. If you get an attorney, now I get an attorney. Now I have an attorney that helps me with it. But back then, guys, I had to learn myself. I did all my research. Again, LegalZoom is not paying me, just FYI, but this is the truth. I use LegalZoom and it worked out for me. I'm not saying I recommend it or not. I'm just letting you know that is what I did and it was fine. Well, with all that being said, let's, you know, fast forward to today. Today, I have, I have a few businesses and they are, yes, e-commerce and businesses that I absolutely love very much. I'm super passionate about, but I have learned not to get too emotionally tied to any of them. And I know that might sound a little weird because I absolutely love my skincare. I love the hair care. I love the nutrition. I love the shapewear. These are all things that I use every single day that I'm super passionate about that I stand 110% behind. But I also had a makeup line and it was Be Flawless Cosmetics. Some of you might remember, I literally just closed it, I don't know, less than two years ago. It was very hard for me, but I sat down and spoke to Judy, who is also my business partner for the skincare. And I said, you know what? I see this from the outside looking in. And as much as I love the cosmetics, I have to be honest with myself and with you. I'm not as passionate for the makeup as much as I am for the skincare anymore. I want to focus more on skincare. And also the makeup industry is oversaturated and I don't have the energy to really compete. And I'd rather just focus on this. And it was a discussion and I have a very amazing business partner. Judy's awesome. Shout out to her. She was very respectful and she said, okay, I don't necessarily agree because she loves makeup. She's like, you use it every day. You have your shows. Like, I'm like, yeah. I was like, but something's telling me I just need to close it. And I went with that instinct. I was like, okay, I, this is my gut feeling. I can't ignore this gut feeling. This is what it's telling me. And it hurt me very much, but I let it go. And I was like, I was okay with it walking away. I didn't cry. Didn't cry this time. Like I did with Bomi Dry. I just said, okay, thank you so much. Cosmetics, makeup industry for what you did. I'm, I'm so grateful, but I'm going to stick to the skincare. And that's what I've been doing. And I think the key to my success, because all of my businesses, I can honestly tell you, thank God, have been very successful. I think partially, yes, because I have a platform, which I'm very grateful for, you know, social media and, and ways of, of being able to like promote it. I also have amazing business partners, but I've always been very true to myself. Since my experience with my first business, I've learned to listen to that gut feeling, to that instinct to, hey, am I passionate about this? I, I do a heart check. And I'm like, okay, is this coming from my heart? Is this something I'm passionate about? Does this make me excited to go on social media and promote it or to talk to someone on the street, someone that may not even know who Cheekies is about my skincare? Or when people ask me, oh my God, you smell so good. What is it? I'm like, oh, Raina, it's my perfume. And it's like, it's someone that doesn't even know who I am. And I get a lot of compliments on it and I'm selling it. But because I'm like, this is something I absolutely love. So I always do that heart check of like, is my heart in the right place? Am I doing this for the right reasons? Yes, of course, we want to make money. Yes, of course, we want to make ends meet. That is important. But for me, it's important to be super passionate about what you're doing and what you're selling and be able to stand behind it 100%. So I think that has helped me a lot because I'm a person that wears my emotions on my sleeve. And you can tell if I'm having a bad day or I'm super happy or I'm able to sell it. Like There are times when I need to post something, but I'm just not in the right state of mind. And I'm like, okay. And yes, I'm a businesswoman. I should just like put my emotions to the side. Absolutely. But there are days where I'm like, I'm the person selling it. I'm the billboard. So if I am just not in the right place to be able to like give my product what it deserves, in order to sell it, then I'm just going to say, you know what? I'm not going to do it today. I'll do it tomorrow. And I've learned to just respect myself, respect my, my businesses, my products, and do it when I'm like 100% where I'm like, okay, good. Now I can give it and I can attack it. You know what I mean? But when I say don't be emotionally so fixated on like, I'm going to make this work no matter what. Yes, there's, that's, that's great to a certain extent. You have to know again when to walk away and when to say, you know what? This isn't working. I tried it and I'm proud of myself for trying this. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the table for now and I'm going to move on to something else. 
I can come back to it later. Like you need to like, just listen to your heart, to your mind, use your logical mind and find that balance between your mind and your heart, you know? And I know it might not make too much sense, but hopefully it does. And again, I always say this, but easier said than done, but try to find that balance guys. So the conclusion of this episode is having and owning your own business is a beautiful thing. It's either for you or it's not for you. There are people that are like, okay, I want to be my own boss. I love it. Or there are people that are like, hey, I'd rather have a boss. I'm better at accomplishing tasks. And that's fine. It's really just figuring that out, you know, knowing that there will be moments of feeling overwhelmed, of feeling like, damn, this isn't working, but try to pick yourself up, be patient. Listen to this episode when you're feeling like that. Remind yourself that it's okay. It's just a moment. We'll get there. Knowing when to walk away. It's all listening, figuring it out, studying what you're doing, always learning more about what it is that you're selling, growing, being willing to grow. But anyways, guys, I'm going to cut it here. And I, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I hope that you, you learned a thing or two or three. And um, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for, for you tapping in and listening to Cheekies and Chill and, and being a part of this community where we're just here to just make each other better. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you and hopefully to your soul. And I love you guys very much. And I will catch you on the next episode of Cheekies and Chill. Okay? And make sure you tell your friend and your mom and your cousin and everyone else about this episode. Anyone that you know will benefit from it. Okay? Los quiero mucho y nos vemos en el próximo episodio. Besos. Do you need advice on love, relationships, health, y más? I'm so excited to share with you that my Cheekies and Chill podcast will have an extra episode drop each week. I'll be answering all your questions. Just leave me a voice message con todas tus preguntas y yo te las voy a contestar personalmente. All you have to do is go to speakpipe.com slash cheekies and chill podcast and record your questions. I can't wait to hear from you. This is a production of iHeartRadio and the My Cultura Podcast Network. Follow us on Instagram at My Cultura Podcast and follow me, Chiquis. That's C-H-I-Q-U-I-S. For more podcasts from iHeart, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast.